Should I use soft body or heavy body acrylics? Is there really a difference between craft paint, student grade, and artist grade paints? What the heck is high flow acrylics? Are these some of the questions that you've asked yourself when you're standing in the paint aisle of your local art store? Well, stick around as I share my guide to acrylic paints and how to choose which paint to use when. Welcome to my studio. I'm Cheryl Baglioli, here to share tutorials, art tips and techniques, and inspiration on how you can live your art life. And today, we're talking about acrylic paints. The number one question that I'm asked when I'm teaching is, how do I know what paint to use and when? It can be confusing for many of us, and we're guilty of seeing a pretty color and then we look for the cheapest one that's on that aisle. I'm guilty. How about you? Well, today's video, I'm going to go through some of the main differences and tell you how and when I use the different types of acrylic paints in my projects within my studio. Acrylics are one of the most popular paints on the market now, but weren't commercially available until the 1950s. So what makes acrylics so popular? One, they can dry quickly, within minutes to hours, rather than days. They're relatively safe to use. Many of these are non-toxic. They have a low odor, so we can use them indoors. They also clean up with just a little soap and water. And finally, they're versatile enough that they apply to so many different surfaces. They come in a whole slew of colors and forms, from thick and pasty to very thin, being the go-to paints for many artists today. If you're finding this information useful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications button so that you know when I upload the next video in this series or when I'm sharing an art project. So we're gonna turn the camera down to my desk so that we can start looking at more detail at the different acrylic paints there are. So what are acrylic paints? Acrylic paints, first of all, is dried pigment, which is the color, and it's mixed with an acrylic polymer base. So this acrylic polymer base can change to make the different types of paint that there are. When you're looking at acrylic paints, we can divide them into two categories to start with. First, you have what we consider artist grade paints. And then second, you have what many consider a craft paint. Now craft paints are perfect for creating crafts. They're great to create, um, to paint on little bird houses or little decoupage items that you're going to do, anything kind of crafty paint, especially if you're playing with kids, paint the pine cones, but they also work great for mixed media and when we're using paint and introducing it into our cards, scrapbooking pages, and a variety of other things. Can these also work on a canvas? Absolutely. Some of the difference that you may find is that there will be not quite as many pigments, a pigment load in your craft paints as you will have in your artist grade paints. So they are lower price point and they come in a multitude of different colors. Some are gonna have glitter in them, some are gonna have pearls in them, some are gonna be a chalk base. So there's a variety of different types that they create um, that are considered more of a craft paint. But today we're gonna talk m and focus on what I call artist grade paints. So when you go to the store and you're looking for artist grade paints, these still come in a variety of different types of paint base. They're gonna have a heavier pigment load. So whereas a craft paint may require three, four coats to get a good coverage, sometimes this will only take one or two, depending on what you're going to do. So, um, 
that's one of the main differences between them. Within your artist grade, when you're looking at artist grade paints, then the next thing that you have to do to start considering, well, what type of paint I'm going to use is what type of body the paint is or what type of medium that they're going to be based in. So most of the time you guys will see the heavy body paint. So you're familiar of walking into an art supply store or Michael's and you'll find a variety of different artist grade paints. Now the great thing about the artist grade paints too is that most of the time they're going to show you what the color is and what the transparency or opaqueness is on the color as well. So you can see on this ultramarine blue that you can see through the little stripes. And so that's a great little feature. Whereas this chromium oxide green is completely opaque and you can't see through it. So most of your artist grade paints will have a little swatch on the paint to let you know what type. Now the basics, the Liquitex basics, that one um, kind of falls somewhere in the middle to me between a craft paint and an artist grade paint. So that's one of the things that you can do. Liquitex has some better, their heavy body. So what is a heavy body? What's the difference between a heavy body, soft body, high flow, all those type of things. So let's talk about that a little bit. Well, the medium that you use to build that the artist that the artist company use to build their acrylics is going to be either more fluid you can tell this one has a little squirt bottle on it so we know that's going to be more fluid or it's going to be a thicker gel gloss so this one here is a little bit thicker than the multi-purpose GAC 100 polymer so this one would be more of like a soft body and then they just build that up and make a thicker gel to create your heavy bodies so when do i want to use one over the other and, and what how do they look so when we look at a heavy body paint most of the time they're going to come in a tube sometimes they can come in a jar so I like the, I prefer the tubes cause I can just squeeze out a little bit at a time and then put the cap back on a jar. You kind of have to dip your, you know, something into it. So when you squeeze out some heavy body, you can actually get a peak to it. So you can see that you get more texture. And so it's a thicker, more like a heavy pudding. You can, work with this with a paintbrush. You can work with it with um, a palette knife. <laughs> Trying to get this open at the same time. And they're gonna have different consistencies on the brand as well. So you'll find some that you love and another one maybe not so much. So don't hesitate to try other paints to see what is available as as well in your area um and i just cannot get this this okay there we go so so this one is another brand so this one is matisse so that's very creamy buttery so each one of them may have a little variance of them but you can tell that they stand up on their own now, it's really great when you're working with these because you can create peaks and valleys and work with them on your canvas. So I'm going to get my little rag here. Um, you can see here that we can create, it's almost like a frosting. And when I put these little grooves in there, those grooves are going to stay in there. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this go in we'll slide this over so you can see that those peaks you can still see them in there and then here you can do this too now I could even make this thicker by adding a texture paste to it if I wanted to build up even more body. I love the heavy bodies because I can use them with a palette knife. I can use them with a paintbrush. 
you can thin them out. You can even add more medium to them if you want them to be a little bit more. You can add a little bit of water, but you don't want to dilute it too much with water because then you break down the principles of it. So this would be these would be considered the heavy body paints. So then after the heavy body, the next thing that you want to, the, the next form of paint would be what a lot of us consider a soft body paint. So a lot of your craft paints are more of a soft body. So they're not quite as thick as the heavy body, but they're not pour out with a heavy flow either. So I would say that the basics definitely falls in a soft body. So you still have some texture to it but it's a little bit of a softer texture. So I'm just wiping off my knife again. So the peaks don't stay as sharp as they did at that point there. So it's a little bit softer, a little bit smoother. You can still dilute it. Now one thing to note is even if I had all three colors the same, so I had a, um, a fluid paint, I had a heavy body, I had a high flow, and they were all the same color, that doesn't mean that the high flow is more watered down. There's not what extra water added to these at all. It's just more of a fluid base of the acrylic polymer of the medium that's inside of it instead. So the base is more of a fluid. As a matter of fact, most of the paints start off as a fluid paint when they're mixed with the pigment, and then the companies add the heavy body texture to them, the heavier gels and mediums to thicken them up and make them a thicker paint. So once for after that, you then have what we consider a fluid. So you can tell that you can shake it, you can move it around. These are more of a fluid paint. So now you see I get these little beads instead of the peaks that we were able to get. These can be used with a palette knife, but they're gonna sink in really quick. These work much better with a paintbrush. So you can paint with them, you can create layers, you can even add a little bit of water to create a wash. So these are really great when you want to create a wash or something of that nature. All of these really work well together in addition. So I can layer, I can start off with a heavy body and then I can put a fluid acrylic over it. I could put a high flow, let the layers dry. I can build this back and forth. So the high flow is almost like an airbrush ink. So that one is very fluid. You see, I'm just getting drops now instead of the beads. And that's what makes the high flow. I love using the high flow if I want to create more of a watercolor look. So again, I can use it just like it is, use it with a paintbrush and just get more of a watercolor look with this. I also love to layer it when I'm working on my paintings. And then finally you have the ink. So the inks are even more fluid than, well that one's not because that one's got some stuff in it. I didn't shake it very well. <laughs> you do need to shake and mix up your inks a lot of times. So this one is very, very fluid and getting bubbles in it even. So you can see that it just drops and splashes. So that's the acrylic ink and that one's by Liquitex. So they all have different purposes and different ways that you can layer them. I use all of them on a canvas at some point in time, but I do find myself leaning more towards either the heavy body or the fluid acrylics to create my base and then build up from there and get to the lighter ones. But you can always mix and match them however you want. When I work with my gel plates, Again, you can use any of these. Just know that if you're working with the heavy body, a little bit of this paint goes a long way. These are also gonna dry a little slower than the fluid or the high flow and definitely slower than the inks. These are gonna dry much quicker than your heavy body paints will. And so that's one thing to note about them as well. They all clean up with soap and water, so, 
that's really how to boil it down. I mean, I could really sit here and talk to you about all the different details there are, but I know that a lot of my students are always confused. Which ones do I buy? You buy which ones that you're going to work with. Think about what type of products you're going to be doing. If you're going to be creating canvases and using them to paint, I suggest you try, start off with the heavy body, um, and then work from there and then start experimenting with the others. If you're doing mostly cards, scrapbooking or crafts, then look for more of a fluid paint, look for more of your craft paints. Those work really well. If you're using this to do mono printing with your gel plate, y'all know that I love my gel plate. I say play with them all, but work with them in mixing and layers. So, you know, mixing a heavy body with the fluid at the same time on a plate may not blend as well. It can be done, but to start with, just start with one, do a layer, and then start with another after that. So hopefully that gives you a little peek of some of the different colors, so or some of the different paints. One of the others that I really is kind of new to the market, relatively, it's been around for a little bit now, are the open acrylics. And these are somewhat between a soft body and a heavy body if I mean I don't know what Golden says that they are honestly and truly but my experience of playing with them is they're more of a soft body almost a heavy body but the nice thing about these is these have a what they call a retardant in them in the medium so these take a long time to dry so if you play with an open acrylic Either on your canvases, on your gel plate, on your cards, your crafts, or anything else. Just know that these are going to dry much slower, whereas your other acrylics may take, you know, an hour, two hours overnight to dry. Sometimes these may take days to dry. Not quite as long as it takes for an oil paint to cure, but these do take a long time to dry. And all of the drying times and setup times is all contingent on where you live, your heat, your humidity, is your AC on, how thin or how thick you put the paint on. You know, where I put the paint really thin, if I put that on a card or on a canvas, it's going to dry really, really quick and I can come right back on with another layer. Whereas when I do the heavy body, if I just you know, spread it out like this, it's going to dry relatively quick. But where I have bigger peaks and mountains where it's thicker, that may take, again, hours, days to dry, depending on what the surface is and what the temperature is outside. But this will give you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with them. So I hope that this helped. I hope that you're going to be excited about going out there and playing with different paints and don't be afraid to try them. Don't be afraid to buy some and don't be afraid to mix them, layer them up and just have fun living your art life. So go ahead and leave a comment below telling me what your go-to paints are as far as type and color. And as an extra, extra bonus, check out this video over here where I'll show you how to make your own DIY wet paint palette so that your paint paints will stay wet longer. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you're finding inspiration to live your art life.